Hi Ricky, uh, thanks for taking the time to chat to Game On Magazine. Now thank you very much to you guys for having me, it's looking forward to, to, the, to the time. Uh, Ricky, we're just going to jump straight into it man, you're a rugby player, that's who you are. But there's a long story behind being a rugby player, so maybe take us back, let's take it from around high school and, and the day when you decided, okay, this is what I'm going to do for a living. Yeah, no, I've been pretty fortunate uh, to start playing rugby from the little age of, of seven, uh, Paliki rugby as, as, as they call it, and when, as things progressed and I had the opportunity to start representing Western Province at under 13 level, I, I started seeing like a career in this. And with that being said, I had the opportunity to go to the awesome school, Paul Rose Gymnasium, where I was given a lot of opportunity. And I mean, it's a rugby school, rugby tradition. So it was cultivated and, and sort of, sort of gone into that, into, into that direction, attending the school. Very fortunate and, 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 and blessed to have, to have represented the Western Province at the under 16 level while attending Paul Rose also at Craven Week level and also had the, the, the opportunity to, to captain the first 15 at Paul Ruiz Gymnasium. Well, I was, I mean, the, the captaining of Paul Ruiz, absolutely a stunning achievement. Purely, I mean, it, it's one of the top rugby schools in the country, so it already puts your head and shoulders above the rest. And I think that showed, because if I heard correct in your, uh, in your year, uh, your matric year in Craven Week, you also captained the under 19 Western Province side. Um, you created the under matric year, I captained the under 18 Craven Week side, and the following year with the, with the under 19 of Western Province. So yes, I've been, like you've mentioned, it's a, it's a prestigious school, and I've been very fortunate to, to attend the school, and it is, like I said, the opportunity that was given to me, the investment of a lot of the people at the school, guys such as Franz Van Nieker, Darby Sneijman Jr., those were the guys that really sort of invested in my life, and, 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 and and sort of steered me into the direction of, of becoming a professional rugby player. Let's go to that uh, under 19 year when you captain. That, that tournament went pretty well for you, didn't it? Yeah, no, it, was, it was really special, especially coming after high school. Uh, you, you sort of now a professional rugby player and you sort of a bit overwhelmed with the, with, with the, whole, with the, whole, the whole new experience. But nonetheless, I, we had a fantastic time in that year. We had the likes in our team and our 19 Western Province team had the likes of Franz Malerba, Eben Etzebet, uh, Sia Kulisi, Skara Tabeni, uh, So Nizamka, all these guys. We were, it was a, it was a well, well trained unit and we were very fortunate uh, to beat the arch rivals back in the day, um, the North South Derby, the Bulls in the, in the final. So that was quite special in, in itself, captaining a, a 19 team in my first, professional, my first professional year of rugby. And then moving on to under 21, you guys almost, you almost did it again, but uh, came unstuck in the final, didn't you? Yeah, I think it, it, it's always been very personal. I mean, we have some close mates like the Bulls, or they've moved around now. And playing in, in age group levels against them from, from under 30, uh, it was always a very personal battle, but the mates also off the field. So I think under the under 21 year was a bit of a revenge. Uh, they came, they came, they came at us hard that, that game and we played the final in Durban and the likes of Arnold Boerta and Pongi Manambi, they, they taught us a rugby lesson that day. <laughs> so, uh, your age group years aside, let's move on to your senior professional career. First cap for Western Province, that must have been special. Yeah, no, it was definitely special. I think my, career, my rugby career has been, has been, as much as there's been a lot of good things, uh, faced a lot of challenges as well. I was in that in my under 20 year. I also had the privilege. We mentioned. I do mean didn't mention that, but I also had the privilege to be part of the UCT um, rugby side that, that that won the varsity cup that that year in 2011. And that was my in the 20 year as well. And very very um, I was very very excited about that year being the, my SA under 20 year, where, which I would have gone to the World Cup. And a week before I, I went to the World Cup, I fractured my leg on the training field. So I missed out on that opportunity. So as much as, 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 as that, there was a lot of excitement in my career up until the point of playing my first cap with Western Province. Um, there was also challenges that I needed to face. But I mean, playing as a kid, you were you, from the age of seven, like I said, Baliki rugby, you wanted to play for the for, for Western Province. It was special my first opportunity I got when I when I got to play for, for, for Western Province in my first cap. 
Take us back to the, the, the injury. I mean, the, the, the road back from there to actually play your first game must have been a long road. Yeah, I think the psychological challenge and the mental challenge of it was, was, was the toughest part of the, that, that nine month journey for me. Uh, was, uh, like, as you said, I had good physical, uh, um, good medical staff that, were, that worked with me. I remember Johan van Wijk, which is now at the SAS Training Center in, 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 in Stellenbosch. He worked hard with me. Uh, so the, the, from, a, from a physical point of view, prep training, getting back into it, that was nice seeing results, but I think the mental challenge for me, seeing your leg fractured on the rugby field and, and, and have to, having, having to come back after that, that was a big challenge for me. But I had a fantastic support structure in my family, in, 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 in close friends. So that, that, that carried me because a nine month journey alone from, off the field from all your teammates because we are such like rugby players are such a tight knit unit and you have your teammates to rely on. A nine month journey can be alone on the injury. So that was, a, it was amazing for me just to see the support of my family, my mom and my dad and my brother and um, all my friends and, and, and my, the group of friends that just came around me and, 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 and supported me that time. Is there an element of fear that first time you come back to the field and there's contact to be had when you've seen that leg broken? I will, I'll never forget that first game back when I, when I played after this, this injury layoff. Uh, it was on the 14th of February. We were playing a warm-up game against SWD in George. And I ran out into the field and I, very, I was so nervous. I was so fearful because it feels, you know from a medical point of view, they've cleared you, everything is fine. Your leg is strong, it's stronger than it's been, that's what the doctors told me. And the moment of liberty or like freedom that I had when I got that first knock on the leg and I looked out to check and it was actually still intact. So that was, I mean, that, in that moment I was just like, well, it was a big injury but I'm back at it and I'm doing what I love again. So, so yeah. Doing what you love definitely, and, and, and I'm going to fast forward then back again to, to your province career. After, after the debut, uh, you, you spent a bit more time as rugby would have it. You've got your ups and downs. I suppose your career at Western Province didn't quite go the way you would have planned it to go. Tell us a bit about that journey and the journey afterwards to Bolan Cavaliers. Yeah, no, it's, um, like I said, there's no hard feelings to anyone or towards anyone at, 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 at Western Province. I had a good time there while, while I was there. There were really people that were very good for me in administration, in coaching. So I cannot say a bad thing about anyone there at, 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 the, at the union. Fortunately, I had to, as you know, a rugby player's career or lifespan is very short and you have to go where opportunity is. Lofi Elof called me, Eugene Elof called me up um, one, one morning and he asked me because I was in, a, in sort of the, the big pool out of age group level, not knowing what's, the senior, what's up with the seniors and at the time there were very good scrum offs as well at, at, at Western Province in Diabal Divanacher, Ricky January, um, Louis Schroeder, Nick Grew, very good, very good scrum offs and for me it was just, for us as rugby players we want to be out of the field and play and um, when Eugene Elof called me up I was said yes I would, I would be honoured to, 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 to join you guys and so I went on, on I'm known to Borland for, for a little while for the, for the Curry Cup campaign and um, I had a good time there as well. I've been, Eugene really backed me, he, he, I got an opportunity to play and, and, and it, was a, it was a nice group of, of guys also to, to, to play with at the time. Well, I mean, we've so many stories. People might think that you're uh, that you're quite uh, you've moved on in your years, but you're only 25, and we're going to move on again till here at 25. You now find yourself at arguably the most exciting rugby union in the country at the moment. I mean, that that must be quite something. Uh, how did you get here? Yeah, I think I'm pretty old really in rugby terms. So 25, it's a steering to the to the end. It's you're closer to the end of your career than when you started off as a as an 18 year old or 19 year old. Um, but no, I can. This has really been uh, oh, the the opportunity and and the the this that has been given to me to to come to Johannesburg and become part of this Lions family has been an absolute phenomenal journey. I um. Was, I was like I said, I was busy playing Curry Cup at the at, at, at Curry Cup uh, First Division with a Bolan at the time. When my agent called me up and and, and said, "We have the Lions um, 
would want to know if you would be interested in coming. And knowing, knowing that, knowing that, um, that they were coming back into Super Rugby because it was just the time of, of coming back into Super Rugby, and they were really playing an attractive brand of rugby from 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 that time already, from Curry Cup level, when I think Coach Johan Ackermann, Coach Lace the Brain took over as as his coaches, you could see the, the 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 change in in play, and that is something you would want to be part of. So for me, it was a, a great opportunity. I was in awe and, and, and sort of overwhelmed because I mean, yeah, I could be so part of something special and special it was up until now. So when I got that call that day, I was like, there's not even two ways about it. Uh, let's, I met up with, I met up with Coach Johan and, and the rest of the management when they played the semi-final against Western Province. Met up with them at the Cullinan Hotel. In Cape Town, had a chat to them, and I re immediately you you just felt that aura, that sense of like this is a passionate team, this is a team that that, that wants to do well coming up in the Super Rugby and, and and going forward. And and that's what it looks like when they play. Maybe give us a bit more insight. What are they doing right there at the Lions? Are they putting something in your food, or is it just you know, <laughs> are they are they just instilling a, a new passion in all the players, a new brand of rugby? Oh. Yeah, I wish it was that simple as food, but I'm not the, the biggest guy or the tallest guy. I mean, I'm the small guy with the, the loudest mouth and feel. So, yeah, I, well, I wish it was food. But no, on a serious note, I think it's the culture that has been created um, within the Lions, um, with Coach Akers and, and Coach Suez, they, like just bringing that team and family dynamic in all these guys that maybe was not the flashiest guys, not the superstars, but guys that really wanted to buy into something bigger. And I think that has been our goal. It's, and that is the beauty of it all, is, is knowing the guy next to you is on the exact same journey as you, wanting to achieve, wanting to be better, and all passionate towards one goal. And I think it's the culture and the, the, the environment that the coaches has created here at, at, at the Golden Lions. Ricky, on a more serious note, I mean, there are a lot of professional rugby players in South Africa. Um, a lot of them come through the school system, they do well, but everyone can't be a springbok. Everyone can't play super rugby and not even everyone can play curry cup rugby. What's been the biggest challenge for you as a professional rugby player and what advice would you give to someone who is in a similar system to you, potentially a bit younger, looking to make it in South Africa? Yeah, I really think it's, um, people don't always realize that it's not just about the glamour that they see on TV. Yes, we do get to love our passion and, and we enjoy it so much, but there's a lot of things that goes on behind the scenes, uh, a lot of challenges. I think one of the main things that stands out for 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 rugby players or the challenges can be injuries. As I've mentioned earlier, I've I've actually fractured my leg or both legs. I've fractured once in, in, in my final year at Paul Rivers and the other one just before S under 20. So injuries is a, is a is a is a big challenge for for us. And then also just also dealing with with with, with sometimes not making the team with team selections. Because it can be very disappointing. I mean, we work, we all work hard towards a goal. You all work to, to make that, that final match day 23 or 22-23. And um, to not get selected can be very disappointing at times. But one thing that I've learned in my rugby career up until now is that, that a balanced lifestyle is, is so important. I try and uh, whenever, I, whenever I step off that rugby field, whenever I leave the stadium, I try and switch off. I don't try and focus too much on, 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 on what has happened. I try and spend time with fa family, with my friends, people that is outside rugby, that doesn't even, that doesn't, not even have to do with rugby, not even interested in me because, of a, because I'm a rugby player. So just to get my mind off. And then another important thing and a big pet peeve of me in South Africa is, is that not enough of our rugby players are studying or, 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 or setting up their life outside rugby. Uh, we get sold these, these, these big dreams and, and, and it, yes, these dreams, they are, you, can, you can really make a good living from it, but it's so important to, and that's the message I would love to get across to a lot of young players as well, stepping, coming out of school now, is try and get a tertiary education behind you, try and get a, 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 some sort of degree or diploma, and it also helps you to keep your mind stimulated, that makes you a clever rugby player, makes you smarter on the field. So. I think, in a nutshell, a balanced lifestyle is for me important. Is to spend time socially with your friends, with family, and also from an educational point of view, is is to really sort of like put something extra in your in your ammo 
and I think that will make you a much rounded, rounded person and a round person in general and a better rugby player. So what's next for Ricky Schroeder? I'll wait you from here. What's the plan? Well, I, I'm still very passionate about, about, about my rugby dream and my rugby goal. I think every young rugby player wants to become a Springbok. So that is definitely still a, 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 a goal and a dream that I'm holding on to. But like I said, I was, I was very fortunate enough to study at the University of Cape Town as well. So I studied a, a, a bachelor's in social science degree, majored in politics and public administration. So that was quite, that was quite nice as well. Um, just for, like I said, that, that, that stimulation of the mind. And so that's a passion of mine. And a passion in, in, in uh, is, is, is people being humanitarian. And so we'd love to get involved in, in developing policies, um, in bettering our society, bettering the, our country as a whole. And uh, another passion of mine is, 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 is public speaking and so I would love to get involved in motivational talk, like motivational chats. would love to get maybe involved in, in presenting and commentating as well. Not just because it's a backup plan, but because it's a real passion of mine. So those are the things outside rugby that also keeps me busy and, and, and endeavors that I would like to pursue further on in, in, in my life. Ricky, it's been fantastic talking to you, man. I appreciate your time and thanks a lot for, for chatting to Game One magazine today. Thank you very much to you guys. It has really been, it's really been fun and, and I hope we'll get to chat soon again.